Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us today for our second annual 988 conference. And um, we want to start the morning by doing a land acknowledgement. And I'm going to put the text of that in the chat as well. Um, um, we want to acknowledge our presence on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Ohlone-Chichenyo people. Um, we recognize that our lives are built on great loss and displacement of the original caregivers of the land. We offer respect to our ancestors, elders, and relatives, past, present, and emerging. And we want to know, we want to state that land acknowledgements are a stepping stone to honoring um, all the broken treaty relationships. Um, so we welcome you all here today to our conference. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. And just as an overview and to let you all know what today is going to look like, um, it's been one year, um, just over a year since the start of 988 as a national new number for the suicide and crisis hotline. And um, the 988 vision goes beyond um, just a place where people can call. It's about people having someone to call, people having someone to respond, and people having a safe place for help when they need it. And today's morning session, which will last till um, 1020, um, will really focus on giving you all an overview of um, these, this three-prong approach. So we'll start with me going over the someone to talk to. That's the piece that Crisis Support Services of Alameda County holds. Um, and then we'll move to Stephanie Lewis from Alameda County Behavioral Health Care Services to talk about the piece about someone to respond, a safe place for help. And then we're going to zoom out a bit and put 988 in Alameda County in the context of the state. And we have Dr. Antu Bui from Department of Healthcare Services um, who will be joining us to talk about the broader vision statewide and how are we going to have a comprehensive crisis system that's hopefully going to be responsive to the needs of folks in the community. So that's what we're here for. And um, I'm sure many of you know that after the morning session, we also have um, some other learning sessions available today um, for you all. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Narjis Zahori Dillon. I'm the Executive Director of Crisis Support Services of Alameda County. And we're proud to be hosting this conference today. And we are really honored to be the place where people trust with their calls and their moments of needs, with their calls and texts. And I'm sharing our um, the link to our website, as well as the 988 Alameda County website here, where you can learn more about our services, as well as the broader crisis continuum. And our vision at CSS is an Alameda County in which everyone in all of our diversity feels a sense of belonging through a comprehensive approach to suicide prevention. And we do that through a th kind of three areas of service, which is community education, crisis services, and clinical services. But today, for the purpose of 98, we're really focusing on our crisis services. And to tell you a little bit about our crisis hotline, we've been running our local line since 1966, and that line continues to be of service to Alameda County residents to this day. And the number is listed right there. That's the 800-309-2131 number. We are open. We're here in Oakland 24-7. And last fiscal year, we took almost 18,000 calls on that line. So that's definitely a line that's always available to our community members. And we also take Lifeline, which now um, is often referred to as 988 calls. And last year, we took about 17,000 calls. Um, on that line. And I think what's notable in the context of talking about 988 implementation is that in the first year of 988, there was a 40% increase in calls on that. And that really tells us the depth of need in the community. It tells us that there has been people in the community who might have not known where to go, who might have been stopped because of um, stigma in their families. Um, so 988 um, from our perspective as a crisis center is working because more people know about it and more people are reaching out for help. And that was the goal when um, 
the three-digit number was approved is further reducing barriers to help seeking. And what we see is significantly more first-time callers, which is good, people who might have previously not reached out for help. And we also see more calls with suicide risk. So these are folks who um, are really contemplating suicide, having thoughts of suicide, and um, reaching out for help during that time. And we also have 988 texts as well as local texts. So we started being part of the 988 text network in September of 2022, so just a year ago. And um, we also expanded our local text hours. We really believe in the local model of um, community members helping community members. So um, our agency runs, we have over 80 staff at CSS, but we also have over 120 volunteers. And that's really core to our um, model of service delivery, both on the crisis line and the text line. So we continue to operate our local text line now 16 hours a day, and we will be moving to 24 seven on 988 text and local text starting January, 2024. And this is, I think, a big win for our community here in Alameda County. Um, there was a time that texting was kind of a secondary way that people might reach out for help, but we know that's not the case anymore. And we also know that it's no longer um, limited to young people reaching out for help. We have people of all ages reaching out by text um, because it might be easier, it might feel more private, um, or it might just give them more of a sense of control over the conversation. So we wanna be here for people who prefer that modality. And you can see um, the significant um, increase in our texts in um, over a one year period. And um, just to give you a sense of kind of what texting is like on the crisis text is 25% of texts have suicide related content. And if you're curious about how to support people on phone or text, we do actually have a session later today dedicated to um, supporting folks with suicidal thoughts and behaviors on phone and text for other people in the room here, because we know that all of you might be supporting loved ones as well as clients in those roles as well. Um, and the one thing I actually wanted to highlight, which um, I might have skipped this slide earlier, was not only we had an increase in suicide related calls, but one of the ways that we were able to um, manage this increase and really stay true to our values as an agency that wants to support folks in the community is by significantly increasing our follow up care in the last year. Um, the follow-up care can look anything like same-day outreach, post-emergency outreach, or up to six weeks of someone from CSS reaching out to a caller or texter to support them around the issues that they called about. And this is a really important tool that has allowed us to keep our emergency um, procedures calls when we get a third party or emergency personnel involved to support a caller at a very, very low number. As you can see, 0.04% of our total call volume ends in an emergency response. And that's, a, that's something that we train to. There's no accident. This is very intentional in our training and our values at CSS. And when you zoom in on the medium to high risk callers, 91% um, of them were de-escalated over the phone. Um, so these are statistics that we share with you um, as folks who might be using the crisis line or who you might be referring others to use the crisis line. We want to, I think, um, share this data so you know what kind of service the person is likely to get and to go against the incorrect belief that calling the crisis line equates to um, having lights and sirens show up to your home. This is really a community-based service with the goal of supporting people where they're at. Um, and our work would not be possible without having access to the broader system of care, including our mobile crisis team, including our um, crisis stabilization units and things like that. And I wanted to share this awesome picture of a Falk ambulance, which is part of the CAT team, um, which has the 988 logo on it. To me, um, this is what stigma reduction looks like. It's sitting in traffic next to an ambulance that says 988 on it. Um, and it was a really kind of, I think, tangibly, tangible moment in my work within the suicide prevention world. Um, to see our number reach this level of public presence. And with this, I'm gonna pass it on to Stephanie Lewis, who's gonna share about 
um, the next two parts of the crisis continuum in 988 Alameda County. Good morning, everyone. I am Stephanie Lewis, the System of Care Director for Crisis Services at Alameda County Behavioral Health Care. So happy to be here and to see so many um, familiar and new faces um, um, since we uh, implemented 988. Um, next slide. So um, we work very closely with CSS and 988 and um, our, our mission, vision, and values are aligned. Um, our mission is to provide the right service at the right time, at the right location, um, creating a safe harbor for people who are having a hard time. And our vision, of course, is also someone to talk with, someone to respond, safe places to go, someone to follow up, and services to meet ongoing needs. Um, and that includes mental health and SUD and connecting to a wide range of uh, benefits, uh, including primary care and applying for Medi-Cal, et cetera. And then of course our values, you know, um, skills and knowledge are wonderful, but they're nothing without empathy. And so um, we value um, people's heart in the work um, of, you know, on what might be the worst day or the worst season for someone um, in their life. Next slide. And so this big uh, pyramid here includes everything that the crisis system of care at ACBH offers, um, prevention and early intervention, which includes uh, a on-duty clinician that receives calls throughout the, the day um, and receives referrals we also provide um, training. Um, included in that training is de-escalation, crisis intervention, suicide prevention, but also our crisis intervention training specifically for first responders. So law enforcement, EMS, paramedics, um, other clinicians that are on mobile crisis teams, et cetera. We also have outreach and engagement teams. Um, GUARD is our geriatric assessment and response team. And then we have a team called Crisis Connect Post-Crisis Follow-Up. So we follow up with folks who um, have contact with 988 or mobile crisis teams or present at John George Psych Emergency, um, but don't meet the threshold for an inpatient hospitalization. So these are people who need something. Um, and so um, they aren't being hospitalized. And so we follow up with them to link them to care. And then we have the middle um, triangle, most of our work, the crisis intervention portion and our mobile crisis teams. Um, our next slide gets into the details about each of those. But if you notice that there is prevention, crisis intervention and crisis stabilization um, aligned with 988 as well, because a lot of the de-escalation and support happens over the phone through providing information and linking people to care. Our mobile crisis teams do respond when a person needs a in-person intervention. And our goal is to connect people to low barrier voluntary services first. And we do have the ability to send people to the hospital on a psychiatric hold if they meet the criteria. And then we have um, crisis stabilization and post-crisis follow-up. This is where our crisis stabilization units come in at PES and Amber House, and then our crisis residential treatment programs at Amber House, Jay Mahler, and Woodrow. And we'll talk more about other um, programs coming online. Next slide. So our mobile crisis teams, any of you who have been in my presentations have heard this probably a million times. ACBH operates three types of mobile crisis teams. So the first one is CAT, our community assessment and transport team. Currently, they can be reached by 911, but we are working on a protocol um, where 988 can help to dispatch our CAT programs. And the teams are comprised of a clinician and an EMT. They are countywide, seven days a week currently from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. and um, 24-7 soon. So CAT is currently working on staffing an overnight team. And this was a big deal. This is the first time Alameda County will have a mobile crisis team operating 24-7. So this is definitely something to be celebrated. Then we have our mobile crisis team, which is our 
longest running um, mobile crisis team in the county has been around since 1988. And it operates Monday through Friday, countywide from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And the team is, comp uh, is um, comprised of clinicians and interns. We started an internship program so that we can work on our uh, workforce and build capacity on our teams. And then our third offering is our mobile evaluation team, which is comprised of a clinician and an officer. They respond in the cities of Oakland and Hayward and the um, hours of operation are there. What's important to note is that we are really looking at sending the right team to the right location at the right time. And so we know that many people are dealing with health concerns and that's why running uh, CAT 24 seven is essential. We also know that not everyone needs police to respond. And so we have a two clinician model that can um, decide if police need to be there or not. And then our MET team is 100% supported through law enforcement. And so these are for our high risk um, cases where people are barricaded and just having a really hard time where safety is an issue and imminent danger to self, others or property are involved. Next slide. And so there are tons of other teams that are implementing um, in the county. And so this slide deck will be sent out. These are links to the websites for these um, services. So Benita House is stepping out there. They're also the CBO that operates our um, CAT team, but they're also operating a team in Albany and also with the city of Pleasanton. And then the city of Alameda is running 24 seven through the fire department with um, paramedics and consultation through family, uh, Alameda Family Services, sorry about that, and um, the care team. And they're doing some great work there. Berkeley's mobile crisis team um, is close to my heart because I worked there for seven years and they are doing great work in the city of Berkeley. And they're also starting a Berkeley specialized care unit um, that should be up and running soon. And then of course we have MACRO, the uh, mobile assistance community responders of Oakland that are doing great work with people who are having a hard time. It doesn't necessarily have to be mental health or SUD. Um, it could be just a quality of life issue or someone who's having a difficult time in the community. So there's tons of um, opportunity to meet people in the community and get them to a service, support them, and um, getting the you know right service to the right person at the right time. So this is exciting. Next slide. And so where we are headed, people have heard of BCHIP funding. Um, we say BCHIP, but it's actually like BKIP, um, the Behavioral Health Continual Infrastructure Program. So the road ahead in the next three to five years, ACBH will be um, operating a crisis residential outpatient program for justice involved TAY or at risk TAY, so transitional age youth. Um, we are also planning to open a combination CSU CRT like Amber House in South Hayward. And then also there is a forensic mental health rehab center and urgent care wellness center um, residential program that um, we will be working on a sober and detox residential center in Livermore and two other pending facilities focused on community wellness, sober and detox. Um, we're either applying or waiting on approval. So we're not only looking at the mental health um, population, but also people who are suffering from addiction or the combination of mental health and addiction. So we are um, well on our way to creating more uh, places for diversion so that people don't have to call 911. They don't have to go to a locked facility that they can voluntarily participate in these services. Next slide. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. So that's it for me and Stephanie. And we have a few minutes before Dr. Bowie joins us to give the um, state overview. So we want to open it up to questions from um, those in attendance for the next um, five or so minutes. If there's any questions that have come up about any content that myself or Stephanie shared, this is your um, opportunity to either raise your hand or put something in the chat. Uh, 
All right, William, I see your hand raised. Please go ahead and unmute. We would love to hear from you. There we go. Thank you so much for doing this. And wow, you're, you're doing so well in Alameda County. It's just, it's impressive. Um, I, my question is this, you've got 988 going and then you have the existing 911 infrastructure. What's been the process for 988 and 911 to work together to make sure that calls are getting routed to the appropriate places that, you know, mental health calls have the opportunity to be de-escalated if they go to 911. And, you know, I think you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So I can speak to this a bit. I'm actually on the statewide committee to create protocols for 988-911 relationship. Currently, that relationship is more on the like, depending on the locality. So there are localities where CSS has worked with them closely over the years. So there might be more of a back and forth. Um, however, there will be statewide protocols in place for 911 operators um, to determine what are the calls, the caliber of calls that would be appropriate for diversion to 988. And kind of based on our work on that protocol, currently we're thinking about, of course, people who have no presenting medical condition, as well as there's no immediate need for a response. So the need for a response is becoming kind of the defining characteristic of what kind of call should be getting diverted from 911 to 988 and also collaborating with our 911 partners throughout the state so at the committee that i'm a part of we have folks from fire we have folks from um police and things like that, um, they do have regular callers that call their emergency numbers. Um, and these are folks who might be dealing with isolation. There are folks who might have unmet basic needs um, like housing and food and things like that. So um, it's really important to try and get those people to the right place so that they're not so reliant on emergency services as their primary place of support. Um, Stephanie, did you want to add anything to that? I was going to say we will be doing a marketing campaign to um, not only for law enforcement, but also for the public um, to educate them about 98 and um, all the services that are available in the county so that we can um, be proactive in redirecting calls from 911 as well. All right. Thank you, Stephanie and Cindy. I'm going to come to you in a moment. I want to respond to a couple of things. Um, that are showing up in the chat. One is, does CAT have police that respond? The CAT team includes a clinician and an EMT, and it can be dispatched by the police. So if the police have already come out, they can call and request the CAT team to come and actually respond. But the CAT team itself does not include law enforcement. Um, and Stephanie, I'm gonna throw this one at you, which is any idea of the max capacity estimated for the crisis residential justice involve or at risk TAY program? I think the number, um, because we're in the planning, uh, building out phase, I think it's going to be 14 to 16 beds. Yeah. That's great, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Cindy, I'm gonna to come to you. Please go ahead and unmute. Thank you. This is all really wonderful. It's great to have all the resources in one place to be able to give to clinicians as well. Um, I'm curious, I work with youth. Um, I'm wondering if you could sort of identify some of the programs that are specifically for youth. I noticed that our CSU wasn't on here, um, the Alameda County Youth uh, CSU over in Fair at the Fairmount campus. Um, uh, Willow Rock? Yeah. Well, it's we're specifically told oh, not to call it, it Willow Rock anymore. It. It's separate from Willow Rock, but it okay. it yes, Apologies. that's the same Willow Rock campus. <laughs> For those of us, yeah, I know. I know, <laughs> me too. Um uh and then I also wanted to just comment um when we've called the cat folks, the police have to come out first and then they call cat we can let them know we we are going to want cat but the police always have to come out first is that your experience that's what we were told when they come when they came out i can take that one so let me just say i don't know how i left willow rock and the csu off of these slides so i will make sure to add them um i am actually the supervisor for the critical care manager 
Christine Mukai. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like hot off the presses. We've been busy around here, but um, so I will correct that. I apologize for that. And then thank our you. mobile crisis teams respond to anyone of any age. I didn't say that, so thank you for asking that question. And currently, um, the way uh, the protocols for CAT is that police have to come clear the scene and then request CAT. But we are working on a protocol with 988. Um, you know, we have to go through what questions to ask to make sure the scene is safe and there's no urgent, urgent situation like 911 situation. Um, so that we can send the CAT team without law enforcement. That is the plan. That would be that would be really awesome. Yeah. Um, so is the Alameda County Youth CSU and is that the only CSU for youth? And are there any other options for um, uh, other than the psychiatric hospitals for crisis support for the kids? Yes, I mean, children 11 years and younger go to Children's Hospital of Oakland and then um, 12 and um, 12 to 17, of course, go to Willow Rock. Um, but we are definitely looking at the need for more crisis stabilization for youth in the county. Thank you, Cindy and Stephanie. I'm gonna pick up a couple questions from the chat. Um, so there is a question asking, what just happened? There are many different, this is Karen, there are many different hours of operation for these various services, including texting. Is it best to suggest someone needing help to call 988? So I wanna be clear about how 988 calls are routed. 988 calls are routed by the person's um, area code. So if someone is calling from 510, they will come to our center in Alameda County. If you're working with someone who you know for a fact doesn't have a 510 number, but you wanna make sure that they get to a local resource, they're actually better off calling our local crisis line number. And when it comes to the telephonic services, both 988 and our local line are 24 seven. Um, for text, you're right in that we currently don't have 24-7 text capacity. So if um, texting is going to be the person's preferred modality, 988 text is the 24-7 option. Um, and something for folks to know is that 988 text is currently being routed within the state. It's, there's a statewide routing system, meaning um, regardless of where someone is texting from, they will be routed to one of the California centers. Um, so once again, if we want, if there is a reason that you think the person would benefit from having localized care, um, giving them the local text, li text line number is a way for them to specifically get to CSS. Um, there is another question saying other counties, this is from Erase. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Other counties like San Francisco have a children crisis clinic that triages the appropriate placement and does not allow law enforcement to initiate psychiatric hold without a mental health provider. Um, so are there plans to develop programs or a clinic that can streamline such referrals because families have been confused with all the different systems involved? Um, Bethany, I don't know if you have any <laughs> knowledge was, of such plans. <laughs> look, I was looking at the, the list of names to see if someone from the uh, Child and Youth System of Care was on in the training to see if we can unmute them because I will have to get back um, on th the answer for that question um, because I don't want to give out incorrect information. Hi, Stephanie. And this is LaFonza. I'm on. My apologies. I, I missed a question. I was reading the text. Can you repeat the question, please? Go ahead, Narges. Sure. Somebody was asking about a children's crisis clinic that would triage the appropriate placement, does not allow law enforcement to initiate psychiatric hold without a mental health provider. Are there plans to develop programs and clinic that can streamline such referrals because half families have been confused with all the different systems involved? What I can share at this time is that we are definitely looking at our crisis services for youth. Um, younger youth, as Stephanie mentioned, we only have children's hospitals. So we're looking at expanding those services and those conversations are happening. We are reaching out to providers to see who we can partner with. Um, 
not a lot of information to share at this time, but I, I can say that we are looking into providing this additional service. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there was a comment saying that Alameda County also is taking, um, has a new area code 341 and whether those calls come to us and the answer is yes. Um, just in the moment, I keep forgetting to mention 341. So yes, we do also take 341 um, calls. Um, there is another question about um, school-based services. So thank you for sharing all this information with us. I was wondering if you partner with schools or have a special program to support, support youth. So there seems to be a lot of desire around um, youth at Crisis support services specifically, our work with schools is mostly around community education. So we have community education available for both um, youth themselves in middle and high schools, as well as for educators, school staff, and parents. So that's a way that we um, collaborate with schools, um, but I know the county also has many school-based programs. Um, Stephanie, do you wanna add anything to that? Yeah, and LaFonza can correct me, but I know that we are in over 100 schools um, in Alameda County. Um, crisis services specifically presents at the school-based behavioral health meetings to make sure they know how to access crisis services when a, a youth is having a hard time. And then, um, you know, there's definitely within our access program, um, you know, linkage to ongoing care. Um, but we have a cost uh, program where um, educators can refer children to um, services for a further evaluation and connected to care. Um, Seneca is at some of our schools. We have um, a, a wide range of services, including primary care clinics coming to the school. So we are definitely increasing our outreach and engagement at the uh, school level. Um, at every level, because our mobile crisis teams are responding to crisis calls um, for um, children that are in school. And Lafonza, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I would just echo everything that you said and, and um, add on to that, that um, behavioral health, we do have school-based behavioral health services and school link services in 14 districts throughout the county and over 150 schools, school sites throughout the county. So we do have a pretty strong presence with providing behavioral health services on, on school campuses. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for your thoughtful questions. Um, feel free to continue and put questions in the chat as they come up and I'm happy to answer, but I do wanna pass it on to Dr. Bowie, um, who will be providing the California perspective on how 988 is being implemented statewide and the current state of um, services there. Welcome Dr. Bowie. Thank you so much. And thank you for your flexibility in um, my scheduling. We had a urgent meeting with SAMHSA on 988 issues. And given the potential federal government shutdown, really needed to take this opportunity right now. Um, so thanks for inviting me and for being flexible. Um, I'm Ante Bui. I'm a community psychiatrist uh, serving as a medical consultant um, in Medi-Cal Behavioral Health and one of the uh, state leads for 98 implementation. So thank you for having me. Um, and uh, we can go to the next slide. I think we probably already covered the basics. So I don't need to tell you, but you probably would want to know that as the most popular state in the country, California answers the highest volume of 98 contacts in the country. And in last year, about one out of eight calls to the network um, originated in California. We have 12 centers in California that answered um, 340,000 contacts in the first year of 98 implementation. And we also reached 90% in-state answer rate. So very proud of that um, achievement. And thanks to everyone who participates and lifts up the network. Um, and certainly a lot of kudos go to the crisis um, center in Alameda County as well. So next slide, please. Um, so these are the 12 centers that cover uh, services in all 58 California counties. Um, and then the next slide gives you a sense of this um, uh, metrics that I mentioned. So this is a, um, uh, a, a monthly report that goes out. It's available um, actually publicly every month uh, on the website that is linked here on the slide, which I think you will be getting after the presentation. Um, so one of the major key performance metrics that we're super proud of is the ability to answer 90% or more of 
um, 988 calls within our own state. So basically trying to strive toward providing the most localized um, service available to uh, people reaching into the lifeline. Okay, um, and I just wanna highlight the fact that because the state is taking an increasing role in helping support um, and implement the 988, we have a dedicated team at DHCS, which is continually to grow to support the expansion um, and also the integration of 988 into the crisis care continuum. We are building our own state-based platform to ensure that there's 988-911 interoperability so that people who call into either 911 or 988 can get the right service from the right system at the right time. Um, you know, there should be really no long, wrong door to get services whether people have physical, mental health or substance use disorder needs. Uh, we are committed to integrating 988 into a lot of other behavioral health initiatives, which you are aware of happening, um, such as the Crisis Care Mobile Units Project, the Behavioral Health Continuum Infrastructure Project, um, Medi-Cal Mobile Services Crisis Benefit, and I'll mention a few others um, later today. Okay, next slide, please. Um, we're also committed with our new state-based system to really um, bring forth centralized and customizable data collection and reporting. Uh, so I just want to kind of showcase a little piece of what that might look like. Uh, we got grant funding from SAMHSA to support implementation uh, and local capacity building, um, as well as really meeting some key performance metrics. Um, so this is just kind of a, a small slice of things that are super important. Um, and the second row in terms of calls, chat, and text answered, that's the metric that I just told you, which is that the aim is to get at least 90% or more of 98 contacts that originate from our state to be answered within our state. So again, keeping it um, in-house and then making sure that people get connected to local resources um, and as soon as possible. So we're meeting that and there's a bunch of other stuff to work on, but I just wanna give you a small taste of, of what we're trying to work on in terms of driving toward um, data informed outcomes. Okay, next step, please. Um, next slide. Um, this is a slide that is, kind of at first glance complicated, but I just want to kind of highlight um, the emergency rescue data. Uh, and a lot of folks are very concerned about what happens when you call to 10 uh, What happens if 911 gets involved? Um, so I just want to share with you some data from the first year of implementation that might be um, reassuring. So that uh, really what you're looking at in this complicated table, I apologize. So there's the month of the year. So from July, 2022, um, the first column, all the way down to June of 2023, we've broken down emergency rescue attempts. That is that is folks calling into 988, having an active um, suicide, there's an active suicide attempt in, um, in crisis or um, some other medical emergencies. So those are emergency rescues. Uh, transfer to 911 would involve things that have to do with um, imminent harm or public safety issues. Mobile crisis referrals is the third section, and then that's out of the total answer contacts per month. So I hope that's clear. And I just want to really highlight the fact that really 98% of calls into 988 are resolved on the phone. I'm sure that has been highlighted before, but um, about 2% of 988 contacts result in emergency rescue, and about 0.1 to 0.2% get transferred to 911. And anywhere between 1.5 to 4% overall get um, referred to mobile crisis response. So that's a really, I feel at least on from our end, um, a reassuring set of data, which we will continue to improve over time. Um, okay, next slide. Um, just want to share a little bit about how the state has been supporting 98 implementation. So really, um, I'm not sure if you know that prior to 98 implementation last July, the state really has been supporting National Suicide Prevention Lifeline Centers through um, just annual funding from the Mental Health Services Act, which is about $4 million per year. Um, of course, with implementation 98, there's a lot of more work uh, and funding that, uh, that came forth. So about $45 million went into initial implementation. And then for sustainable funding, we got a really big win with Assembly Bill 988 that passed last year and has begun collecting the fees since January of this year of about eight cents per of eight cents per line. That fee is set for the 
calendar year 23 and 24. And then it might be increased depending on what the needs are uh, to support 988. Uh, and the cap is at 30 cents per line. So we are all paying into the system right now. Um, and there are lots of things that we need to do together to make sure that it goes well. Right now we have uh, been allocated, DHCS has been allocated 19 million from this fund in order to um, uh, fund our NANA 8 activities. And we'll figure out how to do that. And there will be an announcement coming soon from the department by the end of the year on how that can be done. All right, next slide, please. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about AB 988 because this is where the bulk of the work is going to be happening. Uh, there is a framework and a funding mechanism. We need to support operations of the network. Um, but next slide, we'll talk about the policy um, work that we will need to, to do together as well. Um, so let's see. We have, so uh, as you may know or may not know, uh, California Health and Human Services Agency um, maybe if you can jump to the next slide now, just thank you. Um, so AB 98 has several requirements. I think I already mentioned the 911-988 interoperability and that work is being done by the California Office of Emergency Services. So lots of state entities getting involved in building up the uh, 98 and the care continuum. Then we get, we've got a state 98 policy advisory group that is going to be convened by the California Health and Human Services Agency. And that's really inviting leaders and stakeholders um, from all different uh, communities, including 98 centers, including uh, county behavioral health, um, including tribal entities, you know, uh, you name it. We need to all kind of roll up our sleeve and get together and talk about how do we implement AB 98 to ensure that it is integrated into the crisis care continuum. So um, that work will be starting uh, soon and we have an obligation to make a report to the state legislature uh, no later than December of next year. So lots of work to be done in the year ahead. Okay, um, maybe next slide. Um, for those of you who want to do a little bit more of um, a view of the state vision, um, California Health and Human Services Agency put out a crisis care continuum plan. Uh, you can go to the website linked below. Uh, it lays out a vision for the future state of behavioral health crisis services in California. Uh, and it's inclusive of all crises relating to suicide, mental health or substance use challenges. It's incorporated a lot of uh, inputs from a wide range of leaders in California. It summarizes the current state. It describes a, a vision for the future and the implementation considerations for the current system to really um, better serve Californians. It's really, started, it's really intended to start a discussion. And as I mentioned, I think much of the discussion is gonna be happening over the next course of the year as we um, put out a five-year implementation plan for AB 988. So I encourage you to get involved um, as much as you can and, and provide feedback. Okay. Um, just want to mention a little bit about mobile crisis services. Um, and the state has been doing work over the last several years to support this. As you may know, the crisis care mobile units has been uh, providing funding through the behavioral continuum infrastructure program um, to award um, um, and support and enhance and create mobile crisis response teams throughout California. Um, and then um, we have started, I'm sorry, the next slide is the new Medi-Cal mobile crisis benefit. Uh, and that's a very exciting endeavor right now. Uh, we have the ability to um, pay uh, through Medi-Cal with an enhanced uh, federal matching rate for uh, basically uh, an all-inclusive encounter rate for mobile crisis services for all Medi-Cal members in California. Um, so the B Behavioral Health Information Notice will give you much more details about what that benefit entails. Um, and we are providing active um, training and technical assistance to get this going in counties. And next slide will give you the timeline of what we're hoping to do. It's a big lift for counties. Uh, we completely understand. We are hoping that uh, it will be statewide by uh, June of next year. And next slide will give you um, our email contacts. For if you have further questions about either 988, please email 988 at dhcs.california.gov. 
and then the email for the Medi-Cal Mobile Crisis Services benefit there. Thank you so much, Dr. Bowie, for giving that statewide overview. And I think it really helped put the shares that Stephanie and I had done about our local services into the broader context of um, what is happening statewide. And even the data really echoes that the quality of service is consistent across 988 centers. So if somebody calls and they don't get to us in Alameda, I always feel confident that they're going to another center that shares our values of really supporting the person on the phone and really being responsive to the needs of that person. And we are in the process of implementing a system that will allow us to um, see the mobile teams and resources statewide so that if a caller from one of our counties ends up in another county, um, we are equally effective at referring them to the appropriate service. So um, it was great to hear from you today. And so with that, our morning session is coming to an end. We put some links in the chat of a place where you can get information as well as Zoom links for our 1030 sessions. You have three options at 1030. Um, so you can go ahead and click on the link in the chat to um, see what those options are and make your choice regarding, um, we have providing support after suicide loss, we have safety planning for non-clinicians, and we have supporting youth in crisis, which is an awesome panel um, um, with folks who work in this field um, nationwide. So um, please go ahead and take a quick break and we'll see you at one of those three sessions. And big thank you to Stephanie Lewis and Dr. Bowie um, for presenting this morning and um, giving us all the information from your perspective. Thanks everyone, and we'll see you somewhere else today, hopefully. Take care.